Hey, how's it going? I'm Coach Colin Castell with ShotMechanics.com and welcome to another episode of the Ask Coach C series. Today we're going to talk about shooting confidence in a game, um, what do you do if you don't like your coach, and how you can get extra rotation on your ball when you're shooting. <laughs> All right, so the first question comes from Ivan Espinoza, and they want to know, Hey, coach, I'm a good shooter and very confident in my shot, but for some reason when I get into a game, I lose all confidence in my shot to the point where I pass up open looks. Uh, any advice how I can fix this? Hashtag AskCoachC. All right, so first of all, great question. This is one that I probably get asked at least once a day, sometimes more. Um, and because shooting is so much about confidence, um, you know, it can really, really kind of mess up your shot in a game if you're not feeling comfortable when you're getting ready to shoot. Um, you know, so so like like we all know, shooting's all about confidence, right? But it's how do you get that confidence? Um, now you can get confidence from doing a lot of reps and drills and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you know it'll transfer over into a game, but sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you're still too scared to perform once the game happens. Um, so I always like to go inside of my mind and get kind of this, this, this killer's mindset. Um, and if you can have control over your mind, that's going to help you a lot more on the basketball floor than if you don't. Um, so kind of the term that I always like to tell myself when it comes to shooting is what's the worst that could happen? I like to tell myself that I know if I'm shooting unconfidently, um, or not confident that I'm going to miss more shots. So why should I shoot um, with less confidence if I know that that's going to make me sh uh, shoot a lower percentage? So what you can do is always tell yourself, you know, it's really counterproductive to be nervous because you're going to miss more if you're nervous. It's just a fact of the basketball life. Um, you know, that's why a lot of times if you got a coach that yells at you a ton every time you miss a shot, generally those coaches have poor shooting teams because everybody's scared to shoot the ball. Um, you know, so number one, if you can control that mindset and just kind of think, what's the worst that could possibly happen? That's a great start. Now, after that, after the what's the worst that could possibly happen mindset, you can start to kind of develop that killer instinct, have that killer mindset of, of you're the best shooter on the court. You're the best shooter every time you walk into the gym. That's what I tell myself every time I walk into the gym to this day. And it might not even be true. I could, rock, I could walk into a gym with Clay Thompson, Ray Allen, and Stephen Curry, and I think, I'd probably still beat him in a game of horse, even though it wouldn't happen. But in my mind, I know that I have kind of that killer mindset and that killer confidence that I can hang with anybody on the planet. Whether it's true or not, who knows? All right, so the next question comes from Joey Thiener, and they say, Coach, I have a coach I don't like very much. What should I do about that? Hashtag Ask Coach C. Now, this is a great question, and I'm surprised because this is one of the first times I've actually had somebody ask this. Um, and I really wanted to cover it because it's something that most people will deal with at some point in time. Um, I know I had a string of bad coaches, um, or maybe not bad coaches, but ones that I didn't uh, really prefer. But it's, it's really, really tough, and it can kind of derail your basketball career. Now, the whole thing about a coach is most of the time they're temporary, right? If you have an AAU coach, he's going to be temporary. If you have a middle school coach, they're going to be temporary. If you have a high school coach, they're going to be temporary if you want to play at the college level. Then if you can make it to the college level, that's when you get to choose what coach you want to play for. Um, so what I always tried to do is I always tried to try to keep my mind, um, you know, not not too close into the present, but look, uh, keep my eye on the prize in the future. You know, what do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? You know, this coach might be trying to keep me down right now, um, but I'm going to do what I have to do to keep getting playing time and then to keep moving up to the next level. So that's probably the best mindset that you can have. Um, you know, it's super unfortunate that you can't choose your coach until you get to the college level because let's be honest, there are a lot of really, really bad coaches out there. Um, you know, it's one of those professions, kind of like a lot of police officers that just lend themselves to kind of egotistical, you know, me first sort of guys. Um, so number one, you know, try to have a positive attitude about it. Try to have a glass half full situation. I had a coach growing up who was unbelievably bad. You can't even imagine how bad he is or how bad he was. Um, and, you know, I tried, to, I tried to find the humor in it. I tried to go home and laugh about the funny stuff he said or the funny stuff that he had us do or, or how ridiculous it was. And it's kind of funny because I get together with my friends, uh, you know, my high school friends when we get together and, you know, they were all on the team with me. So we, we, we still talk about it to this day of like all, you know, the crazy stuff that went down. Um, so just know that it's not life or death in, th in this specific situation because you can always control your own destiny um, the further you go down the line. Right, you know, even let's say I know I know a lot of people that didn't get much playing time in high school. Then out of high school, they worked on their game, and then they got you know like a walk-on spot on a college uh, squad. So you can keep moving your dreams, even if there's a coach that maybe is keeping you down. Um, so I would say the number one thing to do is don't quit. That's the easy, easy way out, and a, and a lot of people do it. And I almost quit at one point in time as well, um, because you kind of you feel like somebody's trying to take your dream from you, right? And it's and it's really exhausting. 
Um, and I know the easiest thing to want to do is to quit the team or to stop playing or to do something else. Um, but if basketball is truly what you love and it's what you're passionate about, don't let somebody else take that dream from you. Um, that's the worst thing you can do. That, that, that's like letting them win, right? If they beat you down and they take your dream away, um, you know, that's the worst possible thing that can happen. So instead, battle through, show that toughness. And I guarantee that that toughness that you show will, will transfer for the rest of your life, whether it's in business, whether it's in school, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in pretty much anything on the planet, that toughness that you develop from battling through a situation like this will definitely help you uh, be a better person in the long run. I know, I know kind of the adversities that I had through the coaching um, really helped me to be a better person in the long run. So I'm, I'm really glad that I personally stuck with it. Um, and you know, there, there's a few different ways that you, that you can get through it, you know. Uh, definitely confide in your friends. Uh, you know, the more the more you can be close with the friends, the more it can be you against them mentality. And you don't feel like you're alone or you're on an island. Um, you know, from time to time you can choose. You know, you can switch high schools. You can go to different places. You can transfer. Um, you know, you can transfer. I think middle schools you can still transfer. It kind of depends on where you live and the rules of how you can transfer. Um, and that's a possibility and something that I seriously considered a couple times throughout my basketball career. Um, but you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. You know, socially, is it worth leaving all of your friends? Um, you know, the grass is always greener. There's that syndrome. So you might think that the new school is going to be better and then you get there and then the new coach is maybe even worse. So um, that's not necessarily an option you always want to choose, but just know that there is one out there just in case. All right, so the next question comes from Hectic Prodigy and they want to know, I try to flick my wrist, but I can't really get much ball spin on my shot. Can you please talk about ball spin next video? Thanks. Hashtag Ask Coach C. All right, so so phenomenal question here, and it's one that a lot of young shooters struggle with. And I'm really surprised because I didn't hear many questions about ball rotation for a long time. And then all of a sudden, I feel like I got a ton of questions on it. I got a ton of emails. A lot of people are asking in the comments down below of the last video. Um, so I figured I really wanted to talk about it just to kind of set a few things straight for you guys. Um, so a lot of times people think if you snap your wrist, you're going to get good ball rotation. And that helps. Believe me, it definitely helps. But sometimes that's not enough to get uh, some extra rotation. So there's a few different things you can do. Number one, you can have a little bit of a gap in your palm. So that means that when you're getting ready to shoot, if you have the ball on the fingertips up here or on the pads of your fingers and not in your palm, that's going to give you better snap on the ball when you do snap your wrist. Um, you know, so there's kind of these cons conspiracy theories going around that I've heard recently about palm shooting. Like, oh, all the greatest NBA shooters are palm shooters, so we all have to turn into palm shooters now. Not necessarily, because one of the things about palm shooting, palm shooting meaning that your palm is directly on the ball, uh, one thing about that is it makes it a little bit harder to get good snap on the ball. Um, you know, so palm shooting, I wouldn't necessarily do it, but it works for some people. Um, so number one, you can get a, get a gap in your palm and that's going to help with that wrist snap as well. Now, the other thing that you can do, this is something that most elite shooters do and something that you, if you're kind of entering the high school age, maybe, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior year of high school, this is something that you really want to start paying attention to is rotating the ball to find the seams. So if you'll notice great shooters, a lot of the times when they catch the ball, they will slightly rotate it in their hands to where their fingers are in the seams. Um, and generally, most people like to get their dominant finger in the seam. So since I'm a middle finger shooter, I always try to get my middle finger right in the seam of the basketball. If you're an index finger shooter, you want to get it right in the seam of the basketball. And the reason why is because you get an extra snap on it, right? So as the ball comes out of your hand, if your fingers are in the seams, they're going to give you just that little extra snap as you're following through to get that extra rotation and backspin. Now, rotation and backspin are important because it slows the velocity of the ball, giving it a better chance to go in, and it has better uh, better touch if it does end up hitting the rim. So, so that's why rotation is really, really important. So number one, palm gap. Number two, try to find those seams. You know, it's not necessarily going to be rotated perfectly in your hand every single time, but it's something that you can start working on. And, and if you work on it for a while, you can actually get really, really fast at it. Um, so that's probably my number one trick to get that extra rotation is to find the seams. Um, now, the last one kind of based off of that uh, kind of dominant finger release that we talked about just a little bit ago is you always want to finish with your dominant finger towards the floor. So if I'm a middle finger shooter on my follow through, I want my middle finger pointing down towards the ground. If I'm an index finger shooter, I want it pointing towards the ground because that's the dominant finger that's going to give the most snap on the ball, right? Um, now, a, a mistake that a lot of kids make is they snap their wrist and it's all good, except for they don't let it flop all the way down 
and they kind of cast towards the basket. So their fingers are pointing almost like towards the backboard. This is a great way to kill your rotation. So make sure that you're not casting your fingers towards the basket and you're following through down towards the ground with your dominant finger. And that's going to give you perfect rotation. All right. Thanks for watching this episode of the Ask Coach C Series. And don't forget, if you have a question that you want answered, leave it in the comment section down below and it just might get answered next week. And use that hashtag Ask Coach C on Instagram, Twitter, um, and I'll be looking for questions on there as well. Um, also, don't forget, if you're new to shot me, mechanics, you're going to want to do two things. Number one, hit that subscription button because we're putting out four to five videos every week and we're going to get you better. I guarantee it. Um, number two, you can click the annotation above or the link in the description. Get a free copy of my top three favorite shooting secrets. These are my uh, favorite three shooting secrets to plug into your jumper directly. And most of the time it increases people's shooting percentage overnight. Um, you know, people always say things are too good to be true, but in this case, it's not. All right, again, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with ShotMechanics.com. I'll see you next time. Yeah.